or tape, CDs, DVDs, or our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Tuesday afternoon, December the 31st, 1991. Midwinter Family Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Glenn Miller is the speaker of the afternoon. Well, this afternoon, I'm going to teach about something I've taught on lots of times. It seems like I can almost do it without thinking about it because it's... But I'm going to do it from a different angle. I'm going to start at the back and go forwards in this subject tonight, this afternoon. And it's a subject that needs to be taught from every, in every house, in every classroom, in every pulpit, in every Sunday school class. The fear of God. We need to be taught the fear of the Lord. And we have not, as a Pentecostal or a Baptist or anything else, have we been taught the fear of God. We have not been taught that God is a God of judgment and that we'll get his judgments if we disobey his word. <clears throat> it says in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45, it says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and shall pursue you and overtake you, till you be destroyed, because you hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commands thee. Now, we have not been taught that God says that we're going to be cursed if we don't keep his statutes and his commandments. Because we've been taught that God's a God of love, and God's, we live in the time of grace, and God's not going to do any of these horrible things to us because he's a God of love and a God of grace. <clears throat> but God also says that he's a God of war, and he's a God of battles, and he's a God that brings curses upon us. And we haven't been taught that part of, of God. God's grace and his love is, is, is wonderful and perfect, and so is his judgments. And his judgments will come just as sure as we get his grace and his love, so will his judgments come if we don't fear his word and keep his, keep his word and hide it in our hearts and live by it. And it says, All these curses shall come upon you, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. It's ten-generation curse can be forever because it can keep repeating itself. <clears throat> because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. He goes on to say, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord will send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed you. And verse 58 says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of the law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and wonderful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, many, and great, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance and sore sickness. Where's sickness going to come from? Because we don't obey the Lord. Sickness is going to be in our midst. And then he says, and of long continuance. He repeats it, that there's going to be a long time. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of. And they're all mentioned here. I didn't read them. They're all mentioned here. <clears throat> and they will cleave unto you. And he says, and also every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon you until you be destroyed. And the plagues of God and the curses of God 
can be seen in, the, in this land because we have not wholly followed after the Lord and observed to do and to keep his word. And part of the cause of it is because we haven't been taught to be afraid and to fear the Lord. We haven't been taught at home. We haven't been taught in the church the things that God says that we're not to do. We turn around today, and uh, we haven't been taught it in the pulpit, but we turn around today, and, the, and, the, we're, and our kids are being taught from even before they go to, to, to uh, a kindergarten. They're being taught on the TV, and, uh, and especially then when they get into school, they're being taught all the things that are contrary to God's Word, which, we, which they should have been taught at home and in the pulpit, that God says you're not to do them. We're taught, to, taught in the school today to have safe sex instead of being taught that God says you're cursed if you do it. Safe sex brings God's curse. There is no such thing as safe sex because it, is, it brings a curse from God. Uh, but, but the school doesn't teach that. The pulpit doesn't teach it. The pulpit, really, the majority of the pulpits of America are teaching safe sex. They're not teaching. God says you're cursed. So, <clears throat> it's responsibility of the mother and the father and the pastor and the Sunday school teacher to teach that God says you're cursed. So, God says that to hear that in the 45th verse, that all these curses, and we're going to look at some of them, will come upon you and overtake you because you hearken not to the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, and to fear the Lord, that we may walk in the fear of the Lord. <clears throat> so let's go back to, let's turn the page back to chapter 27 in my book. All i got to do is turn back one page. And first we're going to look here <clears throat> at what God says is, is national, national. And then we're going to look at what God says is individual. In uh, chapter 28, still the same chapter, Verse 16, this is national. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Verse 17 said, Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Food. Cursed shall be the food. And then verse 17 says, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of the land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. And cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. That's a national curse for not obeying, keeping the word of the Lord and walking in the fear of the Lord. He says that he's going to bring a national curse upon the land and upon the people. And today we have a national curse in the city and in the field. In the city we have chaos, anarchy in the city. Where the city is cursed, we're cursed in the city. And we're cursed in the field because the, the, the land no longer yields its portion. And, and then when it does, why well, we take it out and, and uh, uh, dump it in the ocean instead of, uh, uh, of giving it to the needy. We dump, it, we dump it in the ocean instead of giving it to the needy. We, we, the, 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 the national uh, uh, government pays to raise it, and then they take it and, and take it out and dump it. We, see, we, we are seeing the results of it. Starvation, people without homes, people who, have, who, who are hungry, people who, have, uh, who, who don't have a, a job. It's because we have disobeyed God's Word, and we are cursed because of it. God's cursed the land. God's cursed uh, has cursed us. About the what? Oh, yeah. Well, not only that. But uh, here uh, they loaded uh, uh, millions of bushels of potatoes on the ships and, and took them out to, and uh, uh, dumped them in the Pacific Ocean. In fact, uh, they loaded some ships up and then took them out there and sunk them. Some of the old Liberty ships, they loaded uh, thousands of tons of, of potatoes, took them out and dumped them. And they done the same with, with uh, wheat and with, uh, with oats and corn. They loaded the Liberty ships up with it to store it, so they said, 
And then the Liberty ships got rats in it, and it got moldy and rotten in it, and they took the Liberty ships out and, and, and uh, opened the plugs and, and, uh, and, and sunk them. But they said they put it in there to store it. Well, they, re they destroyed it. it the, the, the news media doesn't say anything about, about these, what, you know, the, what things like this. If it is, it's just a little short, very short. It's never played, played up like they do uh, people who stand against abortion or something, uh, uh, like they play those things up, or like they play up Madeleine O'Hara and, and the UCLA, or, or that's not right, is it? ACLU, okay. UCLA is <laughs> University of Southern California, but uh, I don't agree with some of the teachings they teach it out there either. Just as bad. <clears throat> Just as bad. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, here in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, we have the national curses. And over in uh, Malachi, again, we have some curses that are national on the church. Now, this here, these curses here are on the whole land, which supposedly is the church. In, in uh, Malachi, those uh, curses are, are on the priesthood and on the church. And this is on the whole land. But uh, in, when this was written, uh, the whole congregation was the church, which isn't true today, but it was then. So then over in, uh, back here in, in uh, chapter 27, we'll back up another chapter, and we find here what, again, where God has cursed us. Now here, these curses are basically individual. Now they can be applied nationally, but they basically are individual. Uh, that God says we're cursed with. And we start with, <clears throat> with uh, verse 15, and it says, Cursed be the man that maketh a graven image or a molten image, which is an abomination unto the Lord, for it's only the work of the hands of a craftsman, and he puts it in a secret place or a place and, and worships it. And this is, to, uh, this is to all the people, and then all the people say amen. But he starts out, first of all, that you have no other gods before you. If you have another god, you're cursed. And uh, America has lots of other gods besides God. And the biggest god is pleasure. And that god of pleasure takes in drugs and alcohol and sex and all, all these things and, and uh, 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 money which produce the God of pleasure in America. America has the God of pleasure. Uh, then the next thing that you're cursed by, it said, Cursed be he that holdeth in light esteem his father or his mother. Uh, there's another place that says you're cursed if you smite your mother or your father. But here, you're cursed if you just hold in light esteem your mother or your father. You're to honor your mother or your father. You may not agree with how, what they do or how they act, and they may or may not be a Christian, but you still are required to honor them, regardless. And if you don't, you're cursed. And we've got a lot of young people, multitudes of them, that are cursed because... And there's another uh, 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 place that says that if you curse your father or your mother, you're to be put to death. And I think we may run across that, too, here. Uh. So, we, we have a, a generation of young people who are in rebellion against their parents, and they are cursed because of it, by God. <clears throat> they don't want to believe that, but it's true. But we should teach this. Every church in the country should be teaching what I'm doing this afternoon from the pulpit so that the people know that God says you're cursed, so the kids know that God says they're cursed if they do these things. Some, some fear of God into the, uh, into the household of faith. Because there's no fear of God. They don't, they don't believe this. But God said it, and it's so. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Well, we don't have too much problem with that today in this country because everything was surveyed and laid out and uh, recorded in the county courthouse. And uh, if there's any problem, well, you get the county surveyor and and uh, so forth, and work it out, and, and it, settle it. Yes? Yeah. That's right. Corruption. Mm-hmm. 
That's right. If they swindle, swindle you out of your land and, or, uh, or out of your business, uh, uh, that, you're right. Because this was their business. Their men were, were their business uh, more than they are today. That's right. You're correct. Huh. Uh, then it says, uh, uh, Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way. Uh, those that do deliberately do things to cause harm to, to uh, someone who is blind or has uh, 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 the misfortune of, of being uh, maimed in some way or, or, or uh, uh, the children. We have the, the multitude of children that in the land today. Uh, basically, not all of it, but basically most of it is because of sin. Who are deformed and maimed and in institutions. God says that uh, if we cause the blind to wander out of the way, we are cursed. Then, here is, here is one that this nation is really cursed by. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. I tell you, judges today, there's uh, hardly any of them really judge in righteousness. We need to pray that God will give us judges that are full of the Holy Ghost to sit on the bench so there will be righteous judgment, so they won't just sit there and let things that are not right take place. We need judges that will judge in righteousness and, and prevert unrighteous judgment. Now then, we come to the family. Here, say, Cursed be he that lies with his father's wife. Now, that's incest. God says, Incest, you're cursed. Huh. And it says, uh, and then here's the next one. Uh, it says, Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast. Bestiality. And uh, uh, God says in another place, which we may read here, I'm not sure, that uh, uh, you're not to take up the ways of the heathen. And this is one of the ways of the heathen. Uh, uh, Dr. Noel has done research into witchcraft and sorcery and things like that. Uh, look, because he was involved in it as a child, uh, they had uh, a witch doctor who lived on their land. In uh, Georgia or Alabama, oh, somewhere over there, they had a, a plantation his father did. And they had a witch doctor who lived on the land. And uh, uh, things that happened. But uh, in the time here, of this time, uh, one of the things that was done, if you wanted uh, uh, your uh, your cattle to ha to reproduce good cattle and all, you called for the doctor for for the priest of Baal. This is in history; you can read it in the history. You called for the priest of Baal, and he came out and and had uh, sex with your animal for fertility. And God says. That bestiality, you're not to do that. But today, you, there, there's books for sale on the bookstores in these here, uh, 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 what do you call them? Huh? Well, yeah, adult bookstore, but that's not the name I meant for it. But pornography stores, yeah, that's what I want. In these pornography stores, that you can buy books on, on having sex with animals. Bestiality. It says the land is cursed. And... Uh, it needs to be stood from the pulpit and said and told the kids or from the fr from uh, 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 kidney garden up from the from the little kids up that God says if you play around with the animals it's a curse and you're going to be cursed bestiality God says you're going to be cursed for it now then we come down again to uh, the family it said cursed be he that lies with his sister. The daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. That's incest. And God says you're cursed if you do. And God put that little verse together in such a way that it takes in any family, however it's put together. If, you're, <clears throat> if your mother dies or your father dies and you've got brothers and sisters, or either way, and then your father or your mother remarry somebody, whose father, whose husband or wife has died, and they have some children, and I'm part of another family over here who have, who have children, and then my mother or my father marries a mother, somebody, and we put a family back together again, 
that becomes <clears throat> the sister of, of my, my father or my mother. Either You see how it is? God says that you're not to marry or have sexual relations with that family in that way. And then you turn around and that mother and father have more children. They have more children. And now you have three families put together as a family. And God says that any sexual relations with that in, inside of that family, it, you're cursed if there is. But that is not allowable by the Lord. You're cursed. <laughs> so we need to understand that if, if these things take place, in the family, it's incest, and it's a curse. And we need to tell our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren that God says that if you do these things, you're cursed. But the school tells us, tell, tells our kids at school, that it's just natural. And that uh, you just to be sure that you have safe sex. And if, you, if that takes place, and it's taking place rampant across the nation, takes place... God says we're cursed. So we've got a nation today that is cursed because of sex. There's another scripture, it's not here in this, but there's another scripture that says if you give your brother strong drink, you're cursed. And this nation has given our brother strong drink. So we're, the nation is cursed from that. The Kennedy family is cursed. Because the Kennedy family has, is one of the largest owners of the breweries uh, that produce uh, uh, whiskey. They own almost all the liquor uh, uh, that comes from Ireland and, or over in Scotland and over in Ireland over there. That's how they became millionaires, because during the Depression days, he had enough money that he bought them up. And when Depression, or, or I mean, Prohibition days... He had money in, uh, when he was uh, a, a uh, uh, ambassador over there. He bought up, bought up all the, the, the uh, uh, breweries. And then when uh, probation was taken off, well, he became a multimillionaire. The family is cursed. Uh, and then it says, Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law. That's, that's incest again. And it's a curse. And it says, Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, murder, or taketh reward to slay an innocent person, murder. And then God says that if we don't agree to all of this, we're cursed if we don't agree to it. He said, Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law and agrees to do them. So if we don't agree to do it, we're cursed right there because we don't agree to God's word. So, oh, if we if we say, well, that's you know that's not for me today. That was for them. Oh, you can't get away with that. You can't get away with that. But they, it's tried because right over here in Revelation chapter twenty-two, it says, verse eighteen, I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, and I've just been reading the words of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the prophecy of this book, God will take his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. So, if you don't want to agree with that, you're not only cursed, but God says he takes you take your name out of the book of life. <clears throat> so, we're cursed nationally and we're cursed individually, both to a third ge fourth generation and to a tenth generation, because we do not obey the word of the Lord. We do not teach it and we do not fear God in these areas. So now let's look here. God says we're cursed to the tenth generation and the third generation. Let's, or the fourth generation. Let's look at some of that. Let's start, let's start with the uh, fourth generation, Exodus chapter 20. And it says, And God spake all these words, saying... Now, I have a problem with people I hear say Moses' law. Because, in my understanding, it sounds to me like it's God's law. 
and not Moses. If it was Moses' law, it wouldn't say, and God spake all these words. It would say, Moses spake all these words. But that's not what it says. It says, God spake all these words. So it's God's law. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of sin <coughs> and out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make an idol of any animal, bird, or, or fish, and then, and then worship it as a god. You shall not do that. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and the fourth generation of those that do not obey my word. God says he's going to visit to the fourth generation of those that, that make another God, have a graven image, bow down to them, or that do not obey his word to the fourth generation. But he says he'll show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep his commandments. In another place, he says that he'll show mercy to a thousand generations. What is a thousand generations? That's way out there in eternity. And I am believing that God will show mercy to me and to my generations because I have decided to obey the word of the Lord and to declare it, to declare his word. Now, a lot of people say, say, well, you've got to show me just one place. I can't buy that. I've got to say it at least in, in more than one place. Well, turn to, to the 34th chapter and see what that says. <clears throat> now, Moses has come down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments which if I'd have kept reading back there, uh, it, it, uh, they were recorded in the chapter I was reading. And he has come down from the mountain now, after he's had to hew the, rehew the stones and take it back up for to be written in. But this time that it was written in, Moses had to do it. Moses had to, to hew the stones, and Moses had to write it. The first time, God wrote it with his finger. And he wrote more than the Ten Commandments. Because it says he wrote on the front and the back. He wrote more but on, the, on the two tables of stone. But now Moses has come down the mountain with the two tables of stone that had, that had been written again. And that uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, says that he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him, and there proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity. Iniquity is when we do that which we know is wrong, and you do it anyway, that's iniquity. Jesus was bruised for my iniquity. That there's forgiveness for me when I do wrong, when I know better, and do it. <clears throat> and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. So God declares here <clears throat> that, again, that... When we disobey his word, he will visit the curse unto the third and to the fourth generation. Uh, now, that takes care of God saying we're cursed to the fourth generation for disobeying his word, not fearing him. So let's go back over to Deuteronomy chapter 23, and we will look... <clears throat> And what God says here in 23, it says, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation, verse 2, of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not 
enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation, shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Now this that I've just read here goes a lot deeper than what you sound if you look up. That word bastard actually means mixed race. There shall not be a mixed race. You shall not mix. God says you shall not mix the cattle. And God says you shall not mix my races that I have created. But he says that, that salvation is for all. And today there are a lot of churches that are condoning the mixed races. And I don't believe that God is pleased with that. I think it's an abomination to him. If he'd have wanted us to be that way, he would have done it. He would have done that for us when he made us. And uh, I've had some people that really tell me that, that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the, with the races being mixed and marrying, and that is. But I tell you, if you look at it, if you if you look at it, there's hardship and trouble that it causes the children. There is, there is problems for the poor children when that takes place. But who is the Ammonite and the Moabite that shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord to their tenth generation? That's incest. Incest. And what did, it, and, and what did incest bring? It brought in illegitimate children. And what was the incest? Well, let's go back to... to uh, 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 where, where do I want to go? Genesis 19. Genesis chapter 19. And let's see here, for the record, who this is that God's talking about here. It carries a ten-generation curse. And it's the curse of incest. Chapter 19 and verse 36. Well, let's go back and read a little before that. And verse 30, And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zorah, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Well, that really wasn't true. But uh, you see the, the, how Satan told her that, to, to get this to take place. <clears throat> Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he, pre and he perceived not when she lay down or when she arose. That was, that was incest. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I laid yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also. And go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down or when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn very son, and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. Who did Boaz marry? A Moabitish woman. Who became king of Israel? David. What does that got to do with this? Who was the descendant of Boaz and Ruth? David. How many generations were there from Ruth and Boaz to David? How come there couldn't have been a king when they demanded a king? tribe of Judah when they were given Saul, because God could not go against his own word. Ruth was a Moabitess. She was of the lineage of Lot. And there had to be a ten generations between her and King David before, he, before God could, use it, could pull, take a king out of Judah. David was the tenth generation. Ruth and Boaz. <clears throat> and the younger, she also bare a son, and called his name Ben Ammonai, the son of the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. Dear Abby says <clears throat> that incest is the closet demon. And in the last 
uh, few years here, the last three or four or five years, we've had lots of things of public about incest. But God says it carries a ten-generation curse. And I am of the opinion that every family living is under the ten-generation curse of incest. Because I believe that someplace in ten generations, approximately 400 years, that there is incest in the family. Someplace. And I believe then that Satan has, will try his best to reproduce that before that ten generations runs out. So it will carry on another ten generations. So it is possible that incest is, is, is in our family line for hundreds of years. And Satan tries to reproduce it in every family so that it will carry on and, and it will be a, a curse in the family. Because God says we're cursed with it in, in it. So we need to bring every, all of us, need to bring our families before us. And, and because I believe it's there in every family. And, and, and we need to have the curse of incest broken over us, or we need to break it ourselves uh, so that we can come out from underneath that curse. And then the other curses as well. Well, let's look some more now. At, uh, let's go back to Leviticus uh, chapter, let me see, what do I want, 17? No, let's take up 20 first, and then we'll go there. <clears throat> chapter 20. And uh, I'm going to throw in something out of chapter 19 here which uh, I haven't done for quite a while, haven't said anything about for, amount to anything for maybe a couple of years. But I'm going to throw it in here this afternoon. Verse 28 of chapter 19. <clears throat> it says, now you see, what, what I'm reading here is what God has told Moses to tell the people. It says, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh, for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. And then uh, there's an, uh, another scripture that uh, 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 about uh, cutting yourself. Uh, but anyway, I believe that earrings that we wear with pierced ears is a curse. Now, I find nothing wrong with earrings that are not for pierced ears. But God says you're not to make any cuttings in your flesh, this says for the dead, nor to print any marks upon you. But I believe that that applies to, to any cutting that you make in your flesh. And, and it applies to uh, uh, tattoos. You're not to have tattoos. God says that you're not to do that. Now, also, <clears throat> there's been a time or two when we prayed for a woman who has had really a spirit of Jezebel, or witchcraft, or uh, uh, what's the other word I want to use? Uh, 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 seducing spirit. A seducing spirit that she had to remove and renounce her pierced ears and earrings before she could be free. Spirit of harlotry. Spirit of harlotry. A spirit of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, Cleopatra. Spirit of Cleopatra. And sometimes some, uh, some women who uh, uh, paint their eyes and self a whole lot uh, to the extreme. Have to, that's a spirit of Cleopatra. And you have to be delivered from that spirit of Cleopatra in order to, to uh, uh, be free from that. And then it says over here, now let's go on over here in, verse, in chapter uh, 20. I know that somebody here in this tape or something will sure appreciate me reading that. It says, uh, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and notice the Lord said this again, and he says, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever be of the children of Israel, or the stranger, that takes in everybody, the stranger, that sojourns in Israel, and giveth any of his seed to Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Now, most people do not study history, which they should, especially people who are studying the Bible should study history 
so they understand what these things are. Now, most people read that and say they shall not give their children to Moloch. And they don't have the faintest idea of what that was. What it was, they had a statue. Sometimes, it, some of it was a statue that had hands out here. And others was a, had the hands up like this with a hole in the, in the a body of the, of the statue. And they built a big fire either under these hands or inside this, this statue. And the firstborn child of every... And they had a big shindig, and they beat the kettle drums, and they shouted and they hollered, and people brought their firstborn child and pitched it into the fire to the god of Moloch. And God says that's an abomination. Today, it's abortion. The land is, is polluted with blood from abortion. It's polluted. And the children of Israel were told that they shall not partake of the sins of the, of the heathen and the nations around about them, and specifically, they shall not give their children or, or worship Moloch. And the whole household of Israel did, eventually. And they had, uh, they had idols in the groves, and, uh, and uh, uh, God says that's abomination. Another thing that, that the uh, temples of Moloch did, they had prostitutes. Who were the who were the uh, 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 caretakers of the temple? Uh, they had male and female prostitutes, homosexuality, and lesbianism, and straight straight prostitution, and it was unto the god. And you would go and buy a uh, uh, make an offering to the god with cash, give money to the god with cash, and they would give you a token. And that token entitled you to have relations with whatever priest or priestess of the, of the temple that you wanted to choose. Homosexuality, lesbianism, or straight sex. That was their worship of Moloch. One was giving of the children, and the other was sex. Prostitution. And that was the worship. Now... I've never heard anybody. I never heard anybody talk about this until we came here and we begin to study it. Now uh, there's been different ones I've heard talk about this, but it's all in history. And when you, the, the pastor needs to read history so he can tell his people what God says an abomination to him. God puts it in here and he says this. And you say, well, why is it an abomination? What's well, an abomination? Because they took the firstborn, which God says was his. God says. So, Satan says, I want the firstborn. So here, the heathen have this god of Moloch, and they give unto it God's, what, what belongs to God, they give it to the devil. And God says, it was an abomination and a curse to him. And he says that you're, that the children, and that's, that's the, one of the reasons, main reasons why, that, that they were driven from the land. Because they polluted it so. The children of Israel polluted it just as bad as the heathen had done. <clears throat> okay. And he says here that I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given his seed unto Moloch and, to, and has defiled my sanctuary and has profaned my holy name. So God says he's going to cut, cut, cut him off. And you get cut off by getting sick and dying. Then he goes on to say, And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the man who gives his seed to Moloch, and you don't kill him, then I will set my face against that man also, and against his family, and will cut him off. And all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch from among their people. Now the Lord says that if you know about it, you're supposed to stand against it. So the Lord says that we are to stand. In other words, he's also saying that we're to stand against abortion. And declare, do we have a little track back there, a little red track, <clears throat> that is one of the, the best track I have ever seen on abortion. It's right there in the corner of the table, right by, oh, it's laying there on the table. Yeah, and there's a box of them there, too. Yes. That is, what is the title of that little track? What is it? If Your Forehead is Marked. It's about abortion and intercession. And it is a wonderful track. 
<laughs> we got lots of them. If you, I should have said something about it before, so everybody could have taken some of them home with them, give to their pastor and their Sunday school teacher and all that. <clears throat> okay. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. And now, the, the Lord says there's not to be any witchcraft or sorcery in the, uh, amongst the children of Israel, amongst God's people. And that's what got Saul in trouble. After he rebelled against God, then he went looking for a witch, a sorceress. <clears throat> And it worked, but God says abomination. But that the, that that worked because God allowed that. But the but the spirits that, that they bring up are, are demon spirits who are familiar. Probably most of them are familiar spirits who know the person and imitate them, <clears throat> just like a. Uh, uh, we were praying for one, for a person one time uh, who wanted to be free from smoking, and the. Demon to nicotine. The demon started talking out of the woman. We hadn't didn't ask for it to it, and uh, you know, it it said, "I'm going to kill her." And we said, "No, you're not." And he said, "Oh yes, I am." I, I. Uh, we said, "Well, where'd you come from?" Or something. He said, or, or just said to us, "I just came from so and so. I killed her, and now I'm going to kill whoever this was we was praying for." And it gave the name of the person that did had killed, and the person had died, and now then it, it, it died, it had found a new home, and it was its, its job was to kill this person from smoking, either with, uh, with lung cancer or throat cancer or cancer of the tongue or lip cancer or emphysema, but it was, a, it was the job of that demon of nicotine to kill this person. But she wanted to be free from smoking, and we were just praying for her to set her free from smoking, and here this thing surfaced and told us this, uh, uh, it's its purpose. And I, I believe it, because people die from all these things from tobacco. <clears throat> says, uh, then the Lord says here in verse 7, <clears throat> he says, instead of committing all these things, he says, sanctify yourself, therefore, and be holy. Sanctify yourself and be holy. Don't partake of these things. He says, for I am the Lord your God. And then, what does he say here? He says, and you shall keep my statutes and do them. He doesn't say, think about it, do it if you want to. He says, you shall do them. And if you don't, I already read to you what the results, you're cursed. And he says, you do them because I am the Lord which sanctifieth you. You do it because God says so. And, and that's why we do it, because we, we, want, to, we want to please the Lord and, and not to get his, uh, his uh, uh, curses and his judgment. <clears throat> it says, For everyone that curseth his father, now here we are, his father or his mother shall be put to death. Here, not, you don't get a curse on you. Here, he says you're to be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon his own head. If you're put to death, you don't blame the person who put you to death. The blood is on your own head. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteresses shall surely be put to death. Adultery, God says you'll be put to death. Then, over what I've already read in Deuteronomy, God says you're cursed. <clears throat> Thank God we have grace. Thank the Lord for grace. The man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. That'd be your mother-in-law. Both of them shall surely be put to death. It might be your mother, but it's basically... Anyway, they shall be put to death, and their blood shall be upon their own head. Now, here, if a man lie with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have wrought confusion, and their blood shall be upon their own head. If a man also lie with mankind... Homosexuality, as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon their own head. And then we've got churches and denominations that are trying to make it all right, even for them, to, to preach the gospel. And God says that they're to be put to death, that they're cursed. <clears throat> 
If a man take a wife, take a woman for, for his wife and her mother also, it is wickedness. You, they shall be burnt with fire, both he and they, that there be no wickedness among you. If a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall slay the beast. The penalty is death. And the penalty, the curse, the penalty of a curse is death also. Unless we come to the Lord and repent and have the curse broken off of us. Now, if a man shall take his sister, here's the same verse again as I read previously, and his, his father's daughter or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness, he shall bear his iniquity. You notice it's, it says here, it calls the uh, daughter of a stepmother your sister. Because the way it's phrased there, that's what it would be. But he says here that you'll be cut off. And it says that, it, that you're not to see their nakedness. Now, really, in the, in, the, in the original, in the literal, that word nakedness doesn't mean just see somebody's nakedness. It means having sexual relations with them. That's what that word nakedness means, that, they've had, that they have sexual relations. And God says that <clears throat> they'll be cut off and that you shall bear your own iniquity. Now, here is another thing here that, that, that God says in this 18th verse. It says, If a man shall lie with a woman, having her sickness or the time of her monthly period, and shall uncover her nakedness, have sexual relations with her, he hath discovered her fountain, and she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. You're not to have sexual relations with your wife during the time of her period, uh, monthly uh, uh, period. And God says that you'll be cut off if you do. And we'll, we'll see that again. Now, 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 verse 19 says, And thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, nor thy father's sister. You shall not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, your aunt, or with your, by your, your mother's aunt or sister or your father's sister. It says, if you do, they'll be cut off and you'll bear your own iniquity. It's your near kin. It's, it's incest. If a man shall lie with his uncle's wife, he hath uncovered his uncle's sickness, they shall bear their sins and they shall die childless. <clears throat> incest. If a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He hath uncovered his brother's nakedness, and they shall be childless. Incest again. And then verse 22 says, you shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. And verse 26 says, And you shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that you should be mine. So the Lord says that we're his, and that we're to be holy, and that we're to keep his statutes and his commandments, and we're to walk in them, that we may live and not die. Now, let's back up another chapter. And let's go to, well, let's start in chapter 17. Hmm. It says, uh, verse 10, and then we'll go back some more, a little farther in Leviticus and when we get through with this. And what, whatsoever man there be, of the house of Israel, or the stranger that sojourns among you, that eateth any manner of blood, any manner, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, Neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth among you, that which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. Why? For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I say unto the children of Israel, You shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, 
for the life of all flesh is, is the blood thereof, and whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. And every soul that eateth that which dieth of itself, or that which is torn with beasts, uh, whether it be one of your own country or stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. Then shall he be clean. But if he wash them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. So the Lord says we're not to eat anything that dies of itself as well. And if we do accidentally do it, uh, why we're to wash ourselves, and that we may be clean. Uh, but <clears throat> the Lord says that the life is in the blood, and we are to not eat blood. And the life, not, the life is represented in the life of the Lord Jesus, eventually our sacrifice. His life blood was given for, for, for the remission of my sins and of yours. So God is saying that, that blood is the life of the being, and he's looking forward and seeing it as, the, as that which is for the redemption of our sins. And, that, and he says that we're not to ever eat blood. <clears throat> now, verse 18 says, <clears throat> And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now the Lord spake again, see, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. And after the doings of the land of Egypt, or the land of sin, wherein ye dwelt, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall you not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinance, or keep their regulations or commandments. But you shall do my judgments, and keep mine ordinances, to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which, if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. You want long life? Then live in the, keep the word of the Lord. And he says that we are to live in them. And then he goes on to, to give us some ordinances, some commandments here. None of you shall approach to any near of kin to uncover their nakedness, have sexual relations, near of kin, <coughs> incest. Ten generation curse. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. All of this nakedness means sexual relations. The nakedness of thy father's wife thou shalt not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father or the daughter of thy mother. There's that verse again that's put together so it covers all aspects of any family. Whether she be born at home or abroad. Even their nakedness shall thou not uncover. Now you notice that in the beginning I read the chapter where God said we're cursed. Now I read the chapter <clears throat> where God said that we're to be cut off or to be stoned. Now God said here that we're that, that we're not to do these things. But I read it backwards. See, first He told the children of Israel they weren't done to do these things. Then He said if you do it, you're to be stoned, you're to be burnt, you're to be cut off. Then he said, You're cursed. He said, Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy near of kin. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, she is thy mother's near of kin. Thou shalt incest. All this is incest. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife, she is thy aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter in law, she is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou vex, take a wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. In other words, you're not to marry two sisters, have two sisters for wife. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her, adultery, or fornication. <clears throat> thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is abomination, homosexuality, and lesbianism. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion, bestiality. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these, for in all these nations are defiled which I cast out before you. See, the Lord says that these nations that you're supposed to go in and destroy, they do all these things. And you are not to do these things because it is an abomination unto me. 
says, And the land is defiled therefore, and I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomit out her inhabitants. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation or any stranger that sojourns among you. So it applied not only to, to the, the children of Israel, but to anyone who came and joined themselves unto them. They were subject to the same laws of God. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were, uh, have the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled that the land spew not you out also when you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall you keep mine ordinance that you commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, that you defile not yourself therein. I am the Lord your God. He doesn't ask us if we want to, if we'd like to. He just says we're to do it. Now, I had never thought about or even considered the curses before we moved here, that God said we were cursed for any of these things. I had never heard anybody teach on it. I had never heard anybody expound on it um, until the Lord revealed to us here. Now, since then, I've heard different ones uh, teach, and, uh, and, uh, teach on this, this subject. But uh, uh, in Leviticus chapter 3, we were teaching on God's aspects of the blood of the Lord Jesus one Thursday night here at the campground, and we were discussing it and, and talking about uh, uh, <clears throat> the aspects of, of the, uh, and the applications of the blood of the Lord Jesus. And uh, the... Uh, Third chapter of Leviticus, on the 13th verse, I used that night as an example. And also the sixth verse of the fourth chapter uh, repeats the same thing uh, to uh, there. And I read uh, this 13th verse, and I finished reading the chapter. I had no reason to complete reading the chapter, to complete the chapter, because the rest of the chapter had nothing to do with what I was talking about. Uh, and I, to this day, only read it because I feel that the Lord, that the Holy Spirit had me read it, because it, it, had, it had no relationship to what we were talking about. But in reading the rest of the chapter, one of the women who was here that night went home, and the Lord woke her up and had her <coughs> get up, and search through the Bible and find all that she should fa- could find in relationship to this 17th verse of the third chapter of Leviticus. And uh, when she completed it, uh, she, uh, the Lord, she thought, well, Lord, why am I doing this? And he impressed upon her that she was under a curse and her family was under a curse because they had disobeyed the word of the Lord and that her great-grandmother had died with sugar diabetes. Her mother had died with sugar... Her grandmother had died with sugar diabetes. Her mother had died with sugar diabetes. She had two ch- sisters who had it in a very bad way, and she was a borderline case she had just found out on Tuesday before this Thursday, that she was a borderline case of sugar diabetes. And the Lord impressed upon her that it was a curse in the family line and that she should come... And, and, and be prayed for. So Sunday morning, we had service. And just before I spoke that morning, I said, anybody have a prayer request? And she stood up and held up her hand and said, I would like to say something. And I said, say on. And she <clears throat> said what I am being, been telling you. And she said, the Lord told me that if you would pray for me and break the curse, the inherited curse, over me, because we have a, my family has disobeyed your word, that the Lord oh, would, would break that curse off of me of sugar diabetes. Well, I said, if the Lord said so, I will do it. And there were nine people that morning who stood to be prayed for, to break the curse of this 17th verse of Leviticus, which I'm going to read in a minute. 
and we we did. Now that was my initiation to anything about curses. Now I had to find, and then then I began to read, and I found all kinds of scriptures, which I've read some of them to you today, where God says we're cursed, where He says we're cursed. But then I had to find a reason and a way that I had a right to pray for this woman. I prayed because she said the Lord told her to have me pray. I prayed. But I did not know what authority I had to pray for her. So I had to search the Scriptures to find that authority. Well, let's look on here. In the thirteenth verse it says, And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it, and kill it, before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. Then I went on and read the rest of the chapter. And when we get down in verse 17, it says, And it shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings that you eat neither fat nor blood. Now, I've already read some scriptures that God says we're not to, to eat blood because the life is in the blood. But here's one of the first scriptures where he says that you're not to eat it. He didn't say he'll tell you why. He just says you're not to. He says you're not to eat fat. Now, the doctors have found out in the last few years that God knew what he was talking about through Moses. 3,000, 2,500 years, 35, whatever it was, years ago. Because now we're told not to eat fat because it causes plaque and we have heart trouble. But God knew that when he told Moses to the children of Israel, but we've been so rebellious all these hundreds of years we can do what we want to do, and we'll not get any consequences. Well, America is a nation that's getting the consequences, the judgment of God because of their rebellion against His Word. Well, there are lots of people who make blood sausage and blood pudding and blood soup. <clears throat> God says it's to be poured out on the, on the ground. Now, when we used to butcher, Daddy used to butcher, Daddy always poured it out on the ground. But we used to have a neighbor when we lived out to, uh, by... Edinburgh by Breckenridge in Illinois that used to come over and help butcher. And he used to bring a milk bucket with him or two, and I never, never really thought about it, but he used to catch the blood and take it home with him. And uh, I, I really knew what he was doing with it, but nobody ever said anything about it. But that's what he did. He took it home, and they made blood sausage and blood pudding and blood soup. Now, you can buy it in the delicatessen. It's available. And there are there are People who work in the slaughterhouses, I've had them tell me that they have a cup, something there, and they catch a cup of hot blood and drink it. That is quick, quick energy, and it's good for you. God says you're cursed if you do it. Now, you can take, some people can eat blood sausage and blood pudding and like it, but if they took and drink the hot blood, why, they shiver at it. But this, what's the difference? You're doing the same thing. God says you're cursed regardless of it. But anyway, my study was, I'll, since I mentioned, I'll tell you what we were studying. We were studying the applications of the blood of Jesus. And there are five applications of the blood of Jesus in the Scriptures. You can look them up in your concordance. You can find them. Uh, but there is one application of the blood of Jesus that Pentecostals and a lot of Baptists use that is not scriptural. And God has honored it, and he does honor it, and my mother has said it ever since I can remember. But God has honored it, but you go dealing with demons and casting out demons, and you use it some one day, one of them is going to laugh at you. Because a demon only has to obey, it is written. And if you don't have a scriptural basis for what you're telling the demon, they can laugh at you, because you have no authority. Your only authority is two places. Well, three. First of all, it's in the name of Jesus. Next, is it, it is written, and it's in the blood of Jesus. But anyway, these five applications of the blood of Jesus that we were studying that night was, you can appropriate the blood of Jesus, you can apply the blood of Jesus, you can cover with the blood of Jesus, and you can sprinkle with the blood of Jesus. But there's one more. What does the Revelations 11, 12 say? By the, the washed in the blood of the Lamb. By the word of my testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Washed. There are five applications that are scriptural for the blood of Jesus. And but 
But it is, it is, it is a Pentecostal saying and a Baptist saying, I plead the blood. That statement cannot be found in the Scriptures. And if you're dealing with, with demon spirits, they will laugh at you because it is unscriptural. And a demon does not have to obey anything that is not in the Word of God. It is written. is our only authority. And if, we, and if you twist the Scripture, they'll laugh at you. They'll call you on it. Some, if, you do it if you deal with in this long enough uh, with enough people... And you, do, and you do that, and you use something, they'll, you, they'll call you on it. So we need, to the best of our ability, to be scriptural in every way, and then especially when we're dealing in deliverance, that we're, that we're scriptural in how we use the Word of the Lord, that, that, that we appropriate it rightly. Well, 11.12 uh, says, uh, I overcome uh, Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Then the other scripture is, we're, we're washed, washed in, or it's 12, 11 then. No, it's 12, it's 12, 11. For chapter 12, verse 11. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, I, I do say that once in a while, but thank you, Gene. Yes. Uh, the reason the, the, that we don't plead for the blood of Jesus, say, I plead the blood, is because we don't plead for something that is a free gift. It's given to us. It's a gift given and already given to us. And it's just like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift given unto us. It's like salvation. It's a gift given unto us. And we don't plead for it. We accept it and, and, and apply it to our lives. But we don't plead for something that is, is a gift, free gift. But my... Uh, uh, I understand what you're saying, Gene, and that's good. Uh, but what I'm, I'm talking about basically is, is in, in is working with people in deliverance. If the Scripture, if you misappropriate or, or don't quote it exactly correct, as, as Satan did when he uh, was talking to Jesus, he twisted it a little bit. See, when, when uh, Jesus was in the wilderness, when he came to Jesus in the wilderness, Satan quoted the Scripture just twisted a little bit. Well, you do that when you're dealing with a demon... And he'll, he'll call you on it because Jesus, well, Jesus turned around and called Satan on it. He said, it is written. Now, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, so then when uh, all of this happened, well, now then I have to find out where my basis is. So I begin to search. I found out all the curses, or some of them. Uh, we've got a little book back there that Steve Bell put together called Breaking Free, and it has 70-some curses listed in it that are in the Scriptures. And I'm not, to the best of my knowledge, that's all there are, but there may even be more than that. But I know there's that many. And uh, <clears throat> so I had to find my basis for being able to break a curse uh, because I, my Pentecostal tradition told me, and up until that time that was what I thought, that all the curses were gone when I got saved. When I got saved, all the curses were taken away. Well, I, if that were true, then there couldn't be any curse to the third, the fourth, and the tenth generation. So I found that that's not true. When I got saved, the curses were not taken away. I was saved, my soul was saved, and God is sovereign. Maybe He did take some of them away, but He didn't, but not all of them. And the only way they can be taken away is to appropriate Galatians 3.13. Now, John 3.16 says, I'll explain it, how I come to understand that. And since then, it's been proven over and over, many times over, that this is true. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Wonderful. The whole world is saved. But does the, does the verse say something else? The verse didn't stop there, but I did. But the verse didn't. The verse said that whosoever believeth on him shall be saved. But if we quit right there in the middle of the verse, the whole world is saved. But you've got to finish the verse, that whoever believes on him. The same is true with the curses. Jesus became my curse. Galatians 3.13. Jesus became my curse, so I don't have to bear the curse. But I have to appropriate that fact just as I have to accept 
the Lord Jesus and appropriate his, uh, his shed blood at Calvary for my salvation. If I don't appropriate my, his shed blood for my salvation, there is no salvation for me. I must believe. The same I must do with the curse. I must appropriate the fact that Jesus became that curse and apply it and appropriate it So, because it is my authority and your authority to set the captive free and to break the curse from off of us, from off of you and from off of me. And so, now we've already prayed here once this camp meeting about the curses. We had quite a deliverance session, but it didn't work out in the way it just it didn't it wasn't as we have taught here today. So, for the sake of all of us here, and for the sake of this tape, I'm going to pray and take authority in Jesus' name and come against the curses that we are subject to because of our rebellion against God and our ignorance. But we're not ignorant. Ignorance is no doesn't set us free from the law of these curses. And it is. People don't like the word law because they, 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 we, we want to be in rebellion against, uh, against any law that I have to obey. But God says that if we don't, we're cursed. <clears throat> so, Father, I come this afternoon to stand as a priest on behalf of myself those that are present here and those that will hear this tape. And I come in the name and the authority of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom all dominion and authority has been given, both in heaven and in earth. And Jesus said that I give you, me, and each one of us here present, or who hears my voice, that he gives us the authority of his name to use it, to take authority over Satan and to set the captives free. And it is written, Satan, in Galatians 3.13, that Jesus became my curse, that whosoever hangs on a tree is cursed, and Jesus became my curse. So today, I appropriate that, Satan, in, in behalf of myself, in behalf of those who hear my voice, and I break the curse of our ancestral heritage from off of us in the name of the Lord Jesus, and I set us free from it in Jesus' name. And I will list, Satan for your benefit, the curses that God says we're cursed with. <clears throat> he says we're cursed if we make a graven image. I break the curse of Catholicism. I break the curse of bowing to an image over these people uh, and those who hear my voice. I break the curse of holding in light esteem my mother or my father. Or I break the curse of cursing my mother or my father. I loose us from it. Father, help us to repent of these areas that we may be free. I loose us from the curse of causing a landmark to be removed or causing someone's business to, uh, to, to fail or, or, or in that area. Uh, I break the curse of causing the blind to wander, not taking care of those who are, who are less fortunate than us. I break the curse of perverting a judgment to the stranger, the fatherless, or the widow. Uh, I break the curse of, uh, of uh, incest. I break the curse of adultery. I break the curse of, a, of fornication. I break the curses of us, uh, in G, over us in Jesus' name. I break the curse of, of bestiality. I break the curse of homosexuality and lesbianism. I break the curse of murder. Uh, and, uh, 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 and I break the curse of, of not uh, 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 obeying the words that you have given unto us, Father to Father. For your word says that we are cursed if we don't obey your word. Um, uh, uh, Father, I break the curse of, uh, in, uh, that is recorded in, uh, in, uh, um, in the Malachi. I break the curses in Malachi. That's recorded here. It says that we're cursed if, if we uh, 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 make a vow and then don't keep that vow. You say we're cursed. Uh, your word says that we're cursed if we offer you a male of, or, uh, of the flock and then we change our vow and bring something else or we don't keep our vow. Your word says we're cursed. Father, I, I break that curse. Your word says that we're cursed if, if we don't uh, give you the glory and the praise. Father, you said that, that the priests are cursed. And Father, your word says now that every head of the house is the priest of the house. So Father, if we don't give you glory, we bring a curse upon our household. Father, I break that curse. Forgive us, Father. 
Then, Father, you say we're cursed if we don't bring our tithes and our offerings unto you. You say that we're cursed. Father, I break that curse in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, I come against the familiar spirits of disease. Father, you say that you bring all these diseases upon us. And the diseases that are not written, you bring upon us. I come against the curses of disease that are upon us because we have not obeyed the word of the Lord. And I take dominion and authority over the familiar spirits for, that have come down the family line in all these areas where it were cursed and incest and, and, and adultery and, and fornication and idolatry and witchcraft and sorcery and incest and, the, and bastard. I go back for 30, 40 generations. I break the curse of the familiar spirits that come, have come down the, the, the family line and have perpetrated upon from one generation to the next the curse that causes it to be reproduced in the family. I take dominion now in the name of Jesus, and I find these foul spirits, these demon spirits, and ask for the angels of the Lord to come and take them and keep them until Jesus shall judge them at the day of judgment. And I bind them in chains and take dominion over them in Jesus' name, and I command them to set God's people free. I bind the familiar spirits. I, put, I, take, I, I take your rights away. I loose us from you, and I cut you off that you'll proceed no farther. I cut you off, and I break your assignment over God's people to cause us to, to be cut off, to die before our time, that we'll not live out the time allotted to us. I bind and break your assignment over us, and I loose us from you in Jesus' name. You familiar spirits of diseases of all types, heart trouble, kidney problems, liver trouble, uh, uh, pro problems of the intestines, uh, problems of the heart, problems in the lungs, uh, uh, problems of, in the prostrate, problems of the female, uh, uh, problems of, in, in our bodies of all types, uh, problems of mental problems, problems of the eyes, uh, of hearing, problems of speech, pro problems of, uh, of, uh, 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 of our breathing. I, <coughs> I come against all these uh, uh, familiar spirits in the name of Jesus. Uh, take dominion over you. I bind you to the dead judgment. Break your assignment over God's people. And I loose us from it in Jesus' name. Spir all the spirits of, uh, of sexual sins. I break and break those curses of incest, the familiar spirits that come come down and have. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.